Hi guys, and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Samuel Baumeister and I'm the owner here at Tallbooks. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the last segment of our payroll series. And this is about how to process a pay run in Xero. So before you look at this video, make sure you've checked out the other two. So I've got a video on payroll settings, which are found under settings and payroll settings. And then the next step was to set up your employees. So under payroll, you've got an employees section. If you haven't done this yet, don't skip ahead. Make sure that's set up. The main thing with payroll is ensuring all of your settings are correct and you've got all the relevant information inputted into the system before you even attempt to begin. Without it, your pay run will not be successful or you'll have to go back and tweak things later. Make sure you get it correct the first time. Okay, so how do we process a pay run? Very simple. Once everything's inputted, you've got your employees in there, we go to the payroll tab. So first, I'm just going to recap under the employees area here, you can see the pay calendars you've assigned to each employee working for the business. So a pay calendar obviously determines the frequency of when each employee is paid. So you can have weekly, fortnightly, monthly, etc for each employee or multiple calendars. If you have perhaps director's pay run and you've got casuals at different frequencies, it allows you to do that. So in this demo file, we've got quite a few, just so you can see the variety. So we've got a fortnightly calendar for a few of them. We've got a specific fortnightly calendar for just two employees. And we've got a monthly and we've got a weekly calendar. So each of these calendars are completely separate from each other. And when you run them, it'll only bring up the employees that you've linked to that calendar. If your employee is not showing up, make sure you go and tweak your settings. Under the employees file, you can choose which calendar you want to assign to them. Okay, so once that's all sorted, you go to the payroll and you click on pay runs. What we're gonna do here now is click add pay run up the top left. Below that, you'll have your pay run history. So this is handy to determine that you've processed the previous pay run and that it's the correct time to then go ahead and add the next pay run. So we click add pay run. And for the example, I'm just going to choose the first option, which is a fortnightly calendar. We're going to pay Kyle and Joe for the fortnight ending on the 28th of July. So we click next and it'll automatically take us to the final screen where we get a summary. So basically at the moment, before we tweak anything, this is the earnings, the pay as you go, tax, superannuation, the amount to actually be transferred to those employees and the payment date that we've selected. So before we finalize this, you've got to go into each employee on the pay run and make sure that everything is correct. So for example, I know Joe's work this fortnight, but nothing's showing up because maybe Joe's a casual, so I need to input his hours. So if I click into this line here, I will get the specific employee that I've selected. So we've got his rate set up and he changes his hours every pay run. So I'm gonna enter them in here and we'll say that he worked 35 hours at $35 an hour. So what you'll see is that automatically updates all the relevant fields for you. So his net pay is displayed here and that's broken down from the gross earnings minus your PAYG. And you've also then got the 9.5% based on current rulings for superannuation up the top there showing. So Xero will automatically add these calculations for you at the end of the pay run. This will be posted to your accounts and you'll need to transfer this amount for each employee under the net pay. So I'll go through Joe's, make sure we've got the correct amount showing. We've got our tax. His super showing, everything looks correct. And I've noted that his net pay is correct. I'm then able to click save and next and move on to the next employee. So we've got two employees here in this pay run. The next one is Kylie. I can also change between employees by dropping down this option here if you want to toggle between employees. Kylie's got set hours and this looks correct to me. So I'm just going to go through and make sure everything looks correct. 
We've got a deduction set up for Kylie, so that's going to show here as well. Her normal tax, super contributions from the employer, and then we've got our net pay. Now, because Kylie is not a casual, she's accruing leave. And at the bottom here, you'll see the leave accruals for this pay slip. If that's not showing up, you're going to have to click add leave line and make sure you go back into that employee's file and correctly set up the entitlements. Same thing goes for the super. Make sure that this is all set up correctly. Once that's done, I can then process the pay run. So I'll click save at the bottom and then I'm going to close this pay run and go back out to the main page we were on before. So that's now saved. Close this here. Whoop. There we go. And now we've got our overview again. So we've got our total earnings, the date I want to pay that. You can click on the payment date and alter that if you'd like. The payment date obviously affects when the system will post the payments to the account. So if you need this to fall on a different date, perhaps the pay run is correct, but the pay date is later or earlier, make sure you click on payment date here on the right hand side and select the new payment date. Once that's selected, you're happy with everything, what you can do is post the pay run. Now, if you want to triple check this, sometimes I like to click on view reports and have a look at the pay slips. So if you click on that, it will populate the pay slips for you. And basically, these pay slips here are what the employee will receive once you email them or print them out for them. So you can see Zero will populate a full pay slip for the employee with all the relevant details and their accrual information as well. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back to my main pay run and post that. Once you post the pay run, you get a confirmation message. You click yes. And this will automatically affect the accounts in Zero that you set up with the settings that we went through in a previous video, meaning you've now got money owing to the employee. Superannuation has had the expense account affected, so has PAYG and wages and salaries. So that's all done for you automatically. You're now able to see the overview here and under payroll options, you can see payroll options here. You can email the pay slips directly to the employee. Now you have to make sure you've got the email address for each employee set up under their employee file so that this is possible. Download ABA. This is to use when you want to upload a bank file. So if you've registered for this option with your bank, you can download an ABA file, which is basically a text file, contains the information of the pay slip. And when you upload that in the relevant area on your banking portal, it will automatically take that amount out of your bank account and then pay the employees for you. So very handy if you have a lot of employees. I will do a separate video on uploading ABA files for payroll as well. Besides that, you can then view your reports like we had before. You can come in and view these at any time you like under payroll and pay runs as this is now posted. Quite often things go wrong or amendments need to be made. Perhaps someone gave you the wrong timesheet information. Um, an employee didn't start on the date that was showing on the pay run, things like this. You can go into zero and on the most recent pay run, which for example, for us is this 28th of July when we just processed under pay run options, you can revert it to draft that puts it back into the status. We just had the pay run in before we posted it. That allows you to either delete the pay run altogether or make an amendment and then repost it. So there's nothing to worry about there. Make sure you only revert to draft if something needs to be corrected. If you've checked everything and providing no employees give you any surprise information last minute, that should all be fine. So once that's done, you can email the pay slips or you can view them here and print them off up to you and you're good to go. That's how you process a pay run in zero. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below or send through an email.